And good morning. Good morning to those of you joining us in the United States. Good afternoon to those of you joining us in Europe and Africa. And good evening to those of you joining us from the Philippines and other areas of Asia. I am Dawn Wiggins Hare, the General Secretary of the General Commission on the Status and Role of Women of the United Methodist Church. On behalf of our President, Bishop Tracy Smith Malone, our Board of Directors, and my colleagues, especially my colleague, the Reverend Pamela Pirtle, our Director of Leadership Development and Accountability, who has made this dream event come true, welcome. Welcome from our offices here at the Chicago Temple, which is home to First United Methodist Church of Chicago. The General Commission on the Status and Role of Women began here in Chicago as a dream, a dream that was birthed in the 1970s when a group of women gathered right here in Chicago, sort of like we're gathering now, to propose legislation to General Conference for the formation of a task force and later a commission with a singular focus to work towards the end of discrimination against women in the United Methodist Church and by doing so to model that equality and justice to the world. Friends, leading an agency that is charged with eradicating sexism in the world, well, and by extension, the church and the world is a task only slightly harder than developing a safe vaccine for a global pandemic or figuring out a way to bring women together in a singular focus in the midst of a pandemic. But in the spirit of Chicago, yes, and we are here. The Women's Leadership Summit, I Am Her, is a dream come true. When we originally began working on this summit, we imagined, oh, 200, 250 women leaders gathering in Chicago in the way that our foremothers met before us, forming relationships, gathering courage, inspiring one another, strategizing to continue the journey towards equality. Yes, and maybe God envisioned something bigger. Because friends, we're not 200 or 300 or 400. We're right about 700 women and a few good men who wrap around this globe of ours. So, Let's take a moment to celebrate the opportunity to once again gather and focus our mission, our energy, our strategies of I am her. I am her, Bishop, in Maputo, Mozambique. I am her in Berlin, Germany. I am her at the border in El Paso, Texas. I am her in Jacksonville, Florida. I am her in Manila, Philippines. I am her waiting in a line to vote. Relationships are the key to change and they're the key to our sisterhood. Would you now join me in welcoming our partner from Garrett Evangelical, Laleen Rector, the immediate past president of Garrett Evangelical Seminary. Take it away, Laleen. Good morning, my women friends and colleagues. I am Laleen Rector, she, her, and hers, the president of Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary. And I am so excited to bring greetings to you this morning on behalf of the seminary and to welcome you to the I Am Her Women's Leadership Summit. Our United Methodist Commission on the Status and Role of Women, COSRO as we call it, is led by General Secretary Don Higgins Hare. Dawn and her team, with the backing of a terrific board of directors, have brought their vision to life in this conference. It's a vision that will encourage us as women leaders. We are no doubt feeling a little weary, if not entirely worn out, by the radically changed environments in which our leadership must continue its expression. As we know all too well, Racial justice violently persists in the forms of sanctioned killing, incarceration, 
and many other iterations of discrimination. Along with the ravages of COVID, a democracy under grave threat, and the ongoing oppression of women, the love of neighbor has become a literal matter of life and death. I was in a retreat with a group of women leaders a couple of weeks ago when another seminary president, an Episcopal priest, said to us, gender is the mother of all hierarchies. I found that a very compelling observation. The Women's Leadership Summit is a response to some of these realities and how they impinge on women. It promises to inspire, empower, and equip us for our own ongoing prophetic leadership. Our faith calls us to bear witness, to be of courage, to step up, to speak out, to risk, and to work together for the well-being of all people and for God's good creation. We are to lead wherever we have been called. If there ever was a time when the world and its people need leadership that is inspired and inspiring, empowered and empowering, equipped and equipping, it is now. And so many of you have already taken up that mantle. It's good to be together with the sisters doing the work. My prayer for this conference is that it helps to sustain you and through that you and in your own spheres of influence, many other women will be inspired, empowered, and equipped to bring their gifts to the needs of the church and the world. In closing, I must give a shout out to a couple of Garrett alums providing leadership here. We are proud to call them ours. Bishop Tracy Smith Malone, the Episcopal leader of our United Methodist East Ohio Annual Conference and president of the COSRO board. And then Reverend Dr. Cynthia Wilson, who was also our former Dean of Students. Uh, she's now the executive director at Discipleship Ministries. These are very talented women who are providing great leadership for our church and in the world. Now may the Holy Spirit, Sophia, blow through our conference with her wisdom and her feminine energy during these days together. Thank you. Well, good morning again, and thank you, Laleen. Friends, at this time, we will begin our morning worship led by the incomparable Reverend Dr. Cynthia Wilson. Dr. Wilson serves as Associate General Secretary of Disciple Ministries, and she is known throughout the world and across the church. Following our opening worship music and liturgy, we will be inspired by the preaching of none other than Bishop Tracy Smith Malone. Bishop Malone is the Bishop in Residence of the East Ohio Annual Conference. She serves as Secretary of the Council of Bishops, and perhaps I'm biased, but most importantly, she leads the General Commission on the Status and Role of Women as our president. My friends, my sisters, and my brothers, let us prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls to be renewed as we join in worship. Thank you. 
ready for this party tonight? Say this with me. This is an adaptation of Jeremiah 31 and 33. We'll pray this together. As I read the leader's row, then I invite you to pray the lines that simply say people. Let us pray. In truth and love, God has called us together for this time of worship. God has said to us, you are my people, I am your God. Not once, but again and again, the word will be spoken and there will be rejoicing all over the earth. My word will ring out with a glad cry. You are my people, I am her. You are my people close to my heart, I am her. Come, my daughters, let us be glad as we sing God's praises. My word will ring out with a glad cry. You are my people. I am her. You are my people close to my heart. I am her. You are my people. I am your God. I am her. With awe and wonder, in the spirit of joy, with the angelic hosts, we lift our voices. You redeem us, you keep us by the power of grace. You are my people. I am her, I am her, I am her.
Jesus said that you are the light of the world. A city on top of a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, they put it on top of a lampstand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so they can see your good things that you do and praise your Father who is in heaven. I am her. I am fearfully and wonderfully and uniquely made in the image of God created in the likeness of God, created in love and created with a divine purpose, created to be light of the world. I am her, whose light cannot be hidden, whose light shall not be hidden. Our light, our life is a libation being poured out created to give light, to shine light to everyone who is in the house, who crosses our path, who is in our presence, who our life encounters. Our light is the light of Christ. Christ's light stirring and radiating within us, perfecting us, transforming us, forgiving us, healing us, restoring us. I am her. It is the light of Christ within us that makes us shine. I am her who is called to embody the love and the compassion of Jesus, called to show mercy, to hear the cries of the poor, to bring healing to the brokenhearted, the lonely, the sick, the abused, the forgotten. I am her. Called to embody God's justice, to be a voice for the voiceless, to speak truth to power, to stir up good trouble, to confront unjust systems and policies and practices and attitudes and behaviors that oppress and marginalize any of God's beloved. I am her who has been clothed and endowed with God's dignity and strength and purpose. We are strong and courageous. We claim our light. We claim our voice. We claim our power. We choose not to be afraid or discouraged because we know that God is with us wherever we go. And through our lives and our lights and our courage and our witness and our good works, our God is glorified. I am her. As perfectly imperfect as we are, we are complete. We are made perfect through Christ and God has given us gifts too many to number. I am her who renounces anything that seeks to diminish our gifts, our calling, our purpose, our hopes, our voice, our potential, our dreams. I am her who yearns to see myself the way Christ sees me instead of through the way others have tried to define me or by how my fears and my inadequacies and the lies that I've been told about seek to define me. I am her, beautiful, strong, capable, intelligent, worthy. I am her. I am black. I am white. I am Asian. I am African. I am Native American. I am Hispanic. I am straight. I am queer. I am Democrat. I am Republican. I am conservative. I am progressive. I am who I am. 
a beloved child of God. I am her. I have been raped and abused, abandoned and mistreated, disrespected and disregarded, sexualized and objectified. I am who I am, bent and broken, healed, redeemed and transformed, a beloved child of God. That's who I am. I still rise. I am her. I am single. I am married. I am a mother. I am without child. I am her. I have been afraid to dream and I have had dreams deferred. I've had dreams denied and dreams fulfilled. I am her empowered. I still have a dream. I am her who have made mistakes and errors. My path has not always been straight. I am her who carry guilt and remorse and unresolved anger. I have forgiven others and find it difficult to forgive myself, but God's grace covers a multitude of sins. I am her unconditionally loved by God forgiven and set free by Jesus Christ. I am filled with the Spirit of God, and I can fully live into the light, the light that I am. Christ, who has begun a good work in you, will bring it to completion. I am her. I am claiming my purpose. I am claiming my rightful place and position. I am claiming my voice. I am claiming my intelligence. I am claiming my worthiness. I am claiming my dreams. I am her. I am my sister's and my sibling's keeper. My well-being is interconnected with your well-being and, and my freedom is bound up with your freedom. We do not struggle alone. We journey together, praying for one another, supporting each other, learning from one another untiringly working together to remove the barriers and the systems that seek to silence our voices, that seek to minimize our pain and our struggles, that seek to overlook our skills and our gifts and our experiences and our potential. I am her working together to challenge the policies that seek to regulate and legislate what we do with our bodies. I am her. Working to tear down the strongholds of fear and doubt, despair and bondage and pain that cripple us from pursuing our dreams and our hopes, from living into our divine purpose. I am her who choose to get out of my own way and not allow others to choose my path for me. I am her who choose the path that is illuminated with the light of Jesus Christ. I am her who choose not to surrender to the delusion of what I cannot become or what I cannot do or what I cannot overcome. For through Christ, all things are possible. I am her. You are the light of the world. You are precious in God's sight. You are altogether beautiful. God has a divine plan for our lives, and it continues to be revealed what God has in store for you. Every good and perfect gift comes from God, and you are a gift. You are light to the world. I 
I am. I am her. <laughs>